So the van build began with setting up a better suspension to raise the van up off the ground. I have a front wheel drive Sienna and the rumor was that if I replaced the springs and the struts with all wheel drive components, I would gain some kind of height out of that, which it did. After the build, I lost pretty much most of the height that I had gained. I did put in these airbags and that gave me back almost an inch of lost height in the rear. The front pretty much maintained its, its height gain. The advantage of the all-wheel drive springs was it gave a little bit more space above the top of the tire, so it gave room for putting on taller tires. So in hindsight, the do-over would be to not use Monroe product. I found it made a pretty mushy drive compared to what I was used to, so I would go with the KYBs if I had it to do over again. After the lift and before new tires, this is what it looked like. Nothing built inside. And this is what the all-terrain tires that I added on oversized. As I was getting ready to begin my reconstruction of the van, unfortunately the air conditioning compressor gave out and I ended up having to replace the compressor and the condenser. Finally, deconstruction begins. This is the air conditioning and, and heater unit in the rear of the van. Before I could pull that out, I had to buy one of these block-off kits, which are extremely outrageously overpriced. Those two little aluminum caps and those two little green washers and that little tool was about $80. Once capped, the, the unit in the back, I could finally pull that out. So this is the rear AC heater blower unit and all of its umbilical cords. This is what the blower unit removed and you can see the duct is still hanging from the ceiling that goes up to the roof vents and a speaker still in there. To the right of the speaker you can see there's some silver hose and some black hose connected to it. That's the radiator hose that went to the heating block back there. And I originally thought I might be able to do something with that to make some kind of water heater or something, but I eventually pulled all of that out all the way up to the front of the car to make room for the diesel heater that I put in. And this here is the de-rugification of the van. It was pretty easy to cut the rug right where the plastic molding went across for the front of the rear, the middle row seats where they locked onto the floor. The view from the other direction, you can see at the bottom of the screen the brake cable, which obviously can't be taken out. That's for the parking brake. This is the roof at the rear of the van. If you look at the bottom left corner, there's a couple of nuts there in the ceiling. Those are where the roof rack actually bolts into the roof. So this is a wide angle view. The silver things at the right side of the screen on the ceiling, those are the back of the skylight drain. You can see the, the orange tubing on the one side and the other side has green. This is a close-up of the skylight drain. You can see the green tube on it. This is also the wiring that goes to all of the light ceiling lights and switches that are in the ceiling. This is a close-up of the mounting bolts for the roof rack at the rear of the of the van. The next picture is of the middle mount. There's only one screw on that one. This is the passenger side drain for the skylight. You can see the orange tube on that one. And also below that is the airbag. The curtain airbag goes from front to rear. It's a continuous bag, unfortunately. So this here is the main reason for the gutting of the van. As you can see, I've gained almost a foot of storage space from where the plastic housing of the in van interior was to the outside wall of the van. This is now utilized into storage space. As you can see, the driver's side also gains about a foot of storage space. The unfortunate thing is, as, as you can see at the top of the picture, this is where the gas fill nozzle comes in, so that kind of eats up a little bit of the interior space. So this gives you an overall view of that driver's side quarter panel where the top of the wheel well is taken up by the fill nozzle of the gas tank. I ended up having to reroute the cables that open and close that gas door. The little black box on the left side, halfway up, is some kind of computer module. I ended up removing, removing the attachment there and, and stuffing that with some bubble wrap in behind where the tail light is. That bottom thing is a, is a vent that allows air to vacate the door, so when you slam the door, it lets the pressure out. Unfortunately, if anything bumps up against it, it lets all kinds of dust come into the car if you're driving on a dirt road. 
the top the top motor mechanism that opens and closes the back hatch I also ended up removing that and this is the very unlevel floor unfortunately it makes it a bit of a challenge to try to get a floor level and to fit it all in so that the floor doesn't overshoot that door threshold on the side I ended up having to do several strips of wood of varying thicknesses to span the flooring off of the metal floor, which also made it difficult to do insulation. This is another view of those little anchors that are in the floor of the van. So this has to be the bottom of the flooring that goes on top of everything. So the floor is going to be even taller than that. I ended up using th three quarter inch plywood and cutting out some spaces in the back of it to accommodate those loops. So these are both the motors in the back hatch. The bottom one opens and, or well actually it locks the door, and the one above is the one that runs the windshield wiper. So this is another view of the motor that locks down the rear door. And when I show you the reconstruction of the van, this plays a critical role in being able to open the van from the inside. So this is an overall view of the whole back door. It was a struggle. Like At first I kind of wanted to leave all that plastic on there, but once I pulled it off and put wood on, I was so glad I did because it, it so changed the feel of the inside of the van. So this is the storage well where the third row seats tuck into the bottom of the van. And with the carpet removed, you can see that the curvature of the metal there at the front and the back, which is the right and left side of the picture, and at the very center is a hold down that is for a tire nut to hold down a tire into that space. So I think if people really wanted to, if they want to put a spare tire, a full size spare tire in their van, that all they need to do is pull out that plastic junk, the third row seat and the carpeting, and they could fit their tire right in that space. So these are the holes to the roof rack, and this is a rear corner. So this gives you distance from the back of the roof to where the holes are. The two holes on either side are four screws and the one in the center at seven inches is just a hold in place thing of plastic on the bracket that hold that is part of the rack. So in an effort to try to keep these videos a little bit short, this is the beginning of the next section that I want to do. So this video is just basically gutting of the van. So the next video is going to be as I begin to rebuild it from being stripped down. So again, thanks for watching my video and hanging in there. All right, thanks a lot.